So one, six is inverses, right? So I want to start with like what is an inverse, right? So what is an inverse or what are inverses? And the general gist of it is we switch the x and the y's. So if two inverses or two functions are inverses of each other, then the x's of one become the y's of the other. The y's, they would just flip flop. So if I had a graph that had coordinate points 1, 3, 5, 2, 7, negative 4, I don't know if that makes anything, but if it does, then I would switch them to get the inverse. So it would be 3, 1, 2, 5, negative 4, 7. So the x's and y's literally switch. X and the Y. The only two things that are there. Switch. Oh. Yeah. So if you had a graph, which was one of the questions, right? If I actually gave you a line and there was a graph and you had coordinate points on it and you wanted to graph the inverse, you would switch the X's and the Y's. That's the idea behind what an inverse is. It's the switch of the X and the Y. Okay. How do we check to see something is an inverse? Like to see if it's right. We do F of F negative 1 of X and f negative 1 of f of x, and they both have to equal x. So if I have two functions, and I take one and plug it into the other, and I simplify it, it has to give me x, both directions. So if I had an f of x and a g of x, which was our first example, right? We had an f of x equals blah, 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 blah. We had a g of x equals blah, 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 blah. We found f of g of x. And we found g of f of x. And they both had to equal just x. They don't cancel completely out. They have to equal x. You always have to do both, right? If it's, if it's asking you to verify, you have to do both. If you are checking it, obviously, you would do both if you had the time. But so as far as a quiz question goes, that would not be one of them. It's not going to say verify. You're going to be finding it, which is what I'm going to talk about next. You're going to find the inverse, but you can use this to check your work if you have the time. Okay, then we talked about how to find the inverse. And this was step one, change f of x to y. Step two, switch the X and the Y, so all the X's become Y's, all the Y's become X's. Three, solve for the new Y. Michael, you with us? Okay. I love when people say yes, like I know you're not, that's why I asked that question, don't lie to me. Four, replace y with f negative 1 of x. So we cannot leave it as y because we physically changed that equation. As soon as you switch the x and the y, you have changed the value of that equation. So you have to make it back to the f negative 1 of x. And then we worked through those examples, right? And then, and then came the test for functions. Test, plural. There's three kinds, right? From points off, not for functions, thanks. For functions, it's the vertical line test.
from points x can't repeat with a different y and in an equation y can't be an absolute value or raised to an even power okay it cannot be those things if it's those either of those things then it's not a function so that's the test for functions then we did if it's a function is it one to one so test for one to one, which means it has an inverse. One to one means it has an inverse. Yep. So, hang on, let me write this down before I start saying what I'm writing or writing what I'm saying. Three, if my equation said um, y equals absolute value of x plus three, this is a function. There's an absolute value, but the x is in it. But if it says x equals absolute value of y plus three, this is not a function. So yes, so is a function, not a function. That would be a, a V turn on its side and it would fail your vertical line test, but you should be able to determine that just from your equation. Um, the one -to -one is for any type of function, right? So the question is usually, is it a function right first? Then if it's a function, is it one-to-one? -one? And if it is one-to-one, -one, it means it has an inverse. So one-to-one -one and does it have an inverse are the same thing. They're just, they're just two different ways. Wait, so for testing, if it has a one-to-one, -one, it's just testing to find inverse? To testing to see if, it can, if you can find its inverse, if it has an inverse. You have to test to see if it's a function. Right. So if it's not a function, it can't have an inverse. Yeah. Yep, so from now it's a horizontal line test. Two, the Y can't repeat. Everything switches. Think X's and Y switch, so everything switches. And three, the X can't be an absolute value or raised to an even power. Right, depending on the information you get. So if you get a graph, it's the first one. So this one's from a graph. If you're given points is the second test. If you're given an equation is the third test. So you should be able to figure that out from any three of those pieces of information. So if the y repeats with a different x, it is not an it can't have an inverse. It's not one to one. Okay, so that's like to check if it's not. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we worked through this example on Friday, but I said these things that are here, these restrictions down here, to, I said to ignore them at the beginning, this one and this one, okay? And I said I would go back to them. Because now that we understand what the tests are for, for inverses, I want you to think about what happens with these graphs. So what kind of graph is an f of x equals x squared minus 3? It's a parabola that is shifted down three places, right? So as it is, it's a function, right? It would pass my vertical line test, so I know it's a function. But as it is, does it pass a horizontal line test? Could it have an inverse? No, and that's why this is here. It's saying ignore all the values that are less than zero. So really, it would only grab this part of my graph and this would not be part of it. Do, do you have to do anything with that when you're actually finding the equation? No, just know that that was important for it to justify that it could still have an inverse, okay? As it was by itself, it could not have an inverse. So the question on your quiz is actually going to give you an example. Like it would say y equals x squared minus 3, for example. And it would say determine if it's a function, determine if it's 1 to 1, and if it is, find the inverse. 
So I would say that is not one-to-one -one without that restriction. Does that make sense? If it was by itself, I would say it is a function, but it's not one-to-one -one and there's no inverse. If it had the restriction, now it gives you the ability to do the inverse. For finding it, no, but if it was like a test of it, it could be, yeah. So then if you look at this one, there's actually no restriction on it, right? Like I could have any kind of square root function. This is what kind of graph? The square root curve, what kind of shift? Left three. So this is a function and it passes my domain, my, my horizontal line test, right? But if it was the original, if I was saying, well, what if I took this and I switched all its y's and its x's, it would look like this. But because we eliminated this side of the graph, we switched the x and y values, it only looks like this. So we eliminated these points. Does that make sense? If I took and plotted, this is 0, negative 3. If I switch the x and y's of 0, negative 3, what is it? Negative 3, 0, which is that point. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this restriction caused this graph to have that restriction. It didn't need, if this was the only thing we saw, it wouldn't need this in order to find the inverse. Okay. So if that was on the test, it won't be that complicated like that on the test. But, so this is a one to one graph, right? Yes. And it does have it. This has an inverse with that, yes. It's actually that. If I took this equation and I solved it, right, if I switched the y and the x, and I solved it for the new y, it would be this equation. So the first one, it does pass the horizontal. Because of that x is greater than or equal to zero. If that was not there, it would not. Yeah? Hang on just a second. Go ahead. Can you explain what a one-to-one -one is? I don't think it's it means it has an inverse. So how do you know? All those tests we just wrote up. So then these came up, right? Now we're determining if, it's a, if the function has an inverse. So something with domain and range is really just coordinate points disguised as domain and range. What letter is domain? X. What letter is range? Y. So if it confuses you in chart format, literally rewrite these as coordinate points, okay? Where this is my X and that's the Y because those two go together. So it'd be 1 and 80. Then 2 goes with 80. And then 3 goes with 100. So to determine if it's a function or if it has an inverse or if it's one-to-one, -one, because those are the same things, when I'm looking at points, what am I looking for? The y, the y can't repeat with a different x. Does the y repeat yeah. with a different x? Yeah. This is not one-to-one, -one, does not have an inverse. You can say either of those, just know they mean the same thing. Correct. One-to-one -one means it has an inverse. So it's not that the one-to-one -one is the inverse. One-to-one -one means it has an inverse. So then on B and on the video, I actually tell, I told, if you watched it, to change the last one to negative one, and I'll explain that in a minute, but I, I told you to change that. If that's the case now, is this one-to-one? -one? Yes. All the Ys are different, so it's yes, okay? Think about why the negative one had to be there. Because then the x would be the same, and then this is not even an inverse. Does that mean, I mean, it isn't even a function. So that was a typo on my part. If it had said, is it a function? If it is, is it an inverse? Find it. Then you would go through those steps. But this one in the instruction said, if it's a function, that is already a function, which would have been wrong, had that one stayed as a positive one. So it is an inverse? It, it has an inverse. It is one-to-one, -one and it has an inverse. Oh, because oh, you changed it to negative one. Right. That would have made it not a function. Oh, um, the X, yeah, that would have made it a function. Not a function. Yeah, if it was like a, like if the first one was two and the, and the third one was, like if they were all two, but all the Ys were the same, it's fine. It's all the same point. Okay. Yeah, it's all the same point. It, a point could repeat. It just can't repeat with a different one. So for inverse, you look at the y. Correct. And they can't repeat? 
They can repeat as long as the X is also the same. So like if I had two, three, and two, three again, that's fine. I can't have two, three, and negative two, three. So why would this be an inverse if it's negative one, one? Look at the Ys. Does that make sense? So if it does repeat, it has to have the same X. Correct. So it's the same thing as if you're looking for function but reverse. And think about Y, function and inverse, right? Yeah. Switch the X and the Y. So everything that was true about the X for t finding the functions is now about the Y for the inverse because we switch the X and the Ys. Okay, this I already said, this was what we added. This was the third test based on the equation. The X cannot be raised to an even power or an absolute value bars. Okay, that's what we put was the third test from the equation. So looking at these, determine if they are one-to-one -one or has an inverse. Does A have an inverse? Yes. Does B have an inverse? No, because X is squared, right? Does C have an inverse? Yes. Does D have an inverse? No. no, because X is an absolute value. We good? Yes. The most confusing part to me about putting functions and inverses together is the test. You have to remember which one goes with which. Okay. So I try to remember we, we learned functions first. So all the things were about the X's because X comes before Y. Then we switch to inverses, and now all the tests are about the y's because y comes after x, okay? All right, we are going to literally just get started on 2, 1, which is parabolas. Remember I said, don't worry, we're going to get back into quadratics and parabolas, and you're going to spend more time there than you really wanted to. It's about to start, okay? We are now talking specifically just about parabolas, okay? We are going to get way more specific than shifts of these parabolas. Okay, we're going to find the vertex, we're going to find the intercepts, we're going to find the symmetry, we're going to find the axis symmetry, like all that stuff. This 2, 1 is a huge section, like I normally would have divided it in between two days anyways, okay? And this would be the last section that's going to be covered on your quiz. So 1, 5, 1, 6, 2, 1. The test next Thursday, and it will go through to 2, one more section. Okay, so quadratic functions. Notice we're now talking functions, right? Before we were just talking graphs. They had y's and x's. Now these equations are going to have f of x's because we've narrowed it down to functions, okay? Quadratic functions have two standard forms of your equation. This is called quadratic form. Quadratic form. One's quadratic, one's standard, okay? Quadratic form is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The graph of it is a parabola. We know that word. It's shaped like a u. These u's will always point up and down because my x is always squared. The f of x can never be squared because then it fails the function test. So these parabolas, now we've narrowed it down to just parabolas that point up or down. They cannot go sideways. They are symmetric to a line called the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line, specifically vertical line, that passes through the vertex. So do, 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 straight down through the vertex, okay? So it's like the y? It's the x. It would be based on the x. So you look at the x? Yep, yep. I'll teach you how to do it. On a graph, obviously they would look something like this. The vertex is the place in which it changes direction. So if it is pointing down, it's the maximum. The vertex would be that coordinate point. And if it's pointing up, the vertex is the minimum. And this is based on your x squared term. If it's a positive x squared, it opens up and it's a minimum, which I think is on the next slide. And if it's a negative x squared, it opens down and it has a maximum. So these don't have like inverses, right? Because the x is squared? They, they, yes. And it would fail your horizontal line test. Right. Yes. That's why it's weird that these two sections are together, but it is what it is. I actually, a lot of times it gets pushed into these two. I don't often have one, five, one, six, and two, one, but it happens. 
the curse of testing days. Okay, this is what I just said. If the A is greater than zero, so this means it would be a positive X squared, then my parabola opens upward. If the A is less than zero, so it would be a negative X squared, then my parabola opens downward. Mm-hmm. Let me make sure. Wait. Okay, this function, now it's important to start to figure out what format is in. This is not extended into quadratic form, and I know this because there is not an x and an x squared. Okay? The difference between what you just saw and this is that there is not an x and an x squared. If I took and I expanded, don't do this, I'm just going to show you this. If I took and expanded that out, I would get 2, this is x squared plus 2x plus 1. I'd distribute 2x squared plus 4x plus 1. This is quadratic form. This is called standard form. So what we have been graphing up to this point, which is what we're about to do, using transformations is in standard form. Okay? Quadratic has an x and an x squared. Standard does not. If I expanded it, it would. It would go back into quadratic. Okay? It's not about the number of terms. It's nothing like that, okay? Yeah. Uh, you took standard and into quadratic. Can you do the same? Yeah, well, it's called completing the square, and you're hopefully going to at least see it today. Yes. So this is what we're used to. We took an equation that was in standard form, and we graphed it based on its transformations. So tell me what you know about this graph already, because I, I could have given this at the beginning, right? And it should, you guys should have been able to do this. Yeah. Good. Vertical stretch. It opens, opens up. Left one. left one. So I would have gone left one. I would have opened it up and I would have vertical stretched it. Okay. That would have been before today. But what does the direction say? Tall, narrow. Um, yeah. Tomas. Um, uh, uh, oh, this should be two. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. What, what do my directions say that are different than like just graph using transformations? Oh, Funny points. This means we're going to have to get specific now. So what you want to use is your transformations to find your vertex. But then once I find my vertex, I have to find coordinate points to the right and the left that are specific to my graph. So I'm going to find my vertex and then I'm going to plug in at least two points, one to the left of my vertex, one to the right of my vertex. So I'm going to plug in negative 2, 2, negative 2 plus 1 squared, and I'm going to plug in 0. So you pick the points based off what you're doing? Correct. Left and right. Correct. So use your transformations to get the vertex, and then plug in left and right. So this is 2, negative 1 squared, 2 times 1, which is 2. So negative 2, 2, And 2, 1 squared, 2 times 1, 2. 0, 2. Now here's another thing you should remember from this year if you're actually retaining information. This parabola is symmetric, right? It's not symmetric to the y-axis, but it's symmetric to the line, the axis symmetry, which means symmetry says I can go back and forth, right? Whatever's going to happen to the right is going to happen to the left. The difference is with these parabolas, they are shifted off the y-axis. It's, it's symmetric to this imaginary line called your axis of symmetry, not the y-axis. So this doesn't have y-axis symmetry. It's symmetric to the axis of symmetry. So whatever happens to the right should happen to the left. Now my advice is always plug in that point anyways because if you screwed up by plugging in negative 2 and got the wrong thing, you're going to reflect it wrong. If you plug in both those points, they should give you the same point and then you know you did it right. Now you only need the three points to make your parabola. Would we need to, uh, like find nope. And when we put it all together, your intercepts could help you too. If you don't know what it looks like, you could plot as many points as you wanted. But at minimum, the vertex, well, one to the right, one to the left. Yep. So it could be more than three because your intercept might, like you might have your y-intercept there, but you don't know the other point. What's the domain on this? Negative infinity to positive infinity. What's the range on this? 
zero to positive infinity, okay? All that stuff's gonna get asked again. Mm -hmm. So this out of two inches in the same form. Yep. Oh, yep. But going a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. So this is basically what we just did. We took something that was in standard form. Now these, it's the, the different letters, right? We're getting to know these letters. F of X equals A, X minus H squared plus K. A determines, the sign on A determines your up and down. The value of A determines your narrow and wide. The HK is your vertex. Think about it. This is minus. We've changed that in the opposite direction, so this is actually changing the sign. Whatever's in the parentheses, you change the sign to get the vertex because right, left, we move the opposite direction. The K is the up and down. And then the line of symmetry, your axis of symmetry, is X equals. It's always an X equals because it's always a vertical line. It has to have X equals. You can't just give me the H. It's an equation. So it's X equals H. So this is the attempt that we kind of just did on that last example. If we're graphing and it's in standard form, we're going to determine if the parabola opens up or down. Step one. Step two, find the vertex. And this can be using your transformations or your equation, whichever one you're better at. Step minus, no. So we're going to find the intercepts, okay, because it's going to ask for them anyways. The quiz is going to be like, here's your equation. Find your intercepts. Find your vertex. Find your axis symmetry. And then graph it. So remember the x-intercept, we plug 0 in for y. The y-intercept, we plug 0 in for x. There's going to be a lot of factoring involved here, okay? Never goes away. Because every time we make y 0, we're going to have to factor. Or you use the even root property if it's a standard form, or you can use the quadratic formula. There's a lot of different ways to do it, okay? If this stuff is not enough, if enough information, then we're going to plot those extra points, one left and one right of our vertex, okay? If the y-intercept is to the right of our vertex, I only need to plot something to the left. So as long as at the minimum I have the vertex and one point to the right and one point to the left, that's enough. If not, that's when you're plugging in extra points. All right, we're going to do one more. So tell me what you know about this graph based on its transformations. It this is downward. Left two, left two uh, up, four. up four. So I go left to, I go up four, I'm gonna point it down. There's my approximation. That's not the answer I'm going to leave anymore. The vertex was negative two, four. Change the sign in the equation or look at my graph. Wait, what did you do? Oh. I went left to, yeah, yeah. Now your quiz is going to ask for the intercept, so we're going to use it. If it just said graph, I could have just plot. I could have pl just plugged in negative three and negative one, and saw those points and graphed it. But your quiz is going to ask for the intercepts, so we're going to start with the y-intercepts because those are the easier ones. Which means I'm going to make x zero. I get y equals negative two squared plus four, negative four plus four, which is zero. So now I already know this. Zero, zero is my y-intercept. Now I gotta find my x-intercept. Now because it was zero, zero, I know I, I have zero, zero as an x-intercept. See, like math is not that fun. So why are you laughing? Because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Can you take the earbud out of your ear? Like nobody sees a quadratic and goes like, <laughs> doesn't happen right even me I'm a nerd and it doesn't excite me in any way shape or form okay the x-intercept we know we have zero zero but there might be another one and based on what we graphed before we there's probably another one so I have to do it anyways so I'm gonna make y zero yeah so my advice is to make sure by checking it, because if that one was wrong, you're gonna go wrong the other way. But yes, it should, it's symmetric to the, the axis, so it should be down to negative two and left two, because that's the way that it went the other way. But it's gonna ask you for your intercepts, okay? So now I'm gonna subtract the four. 
I get negative 4 equals negative x plus 2 squared. Divide both sides by negative 1. And I get 4 equals x plus 2 squared. How do I get rid of this squared? Square root it, but what? And? Plus or minus. Don't forget it. So this is really two answers. X plus 2 equals negative 2 and x plus 2 equals positive 2. Two answers there, which means two intercepts. Subtract. x equals negative 4. Subtract. I'll get it. x equals 0. I'll get it. Hang on. And there's my 2. Now I already had the 0, 0. I have the negative 4, 0, which is consistent with the point on the other side. Does that make sense? Okay. And I graph. So my vertex, oh, I already wrote it. My vertex is negative 2, 4. My axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. It is x equals, has to be x equals, and it's the age coordinate of your vertex, right? So I could have gotten it from here, or I could have gotten it from my graph. Mm -hmm. Good question. Intercepts are always in coordinate form. So again, this, this question is like a multi-stepper on your quiz. It's going to ask you for the vertex. It's going to ask you for the x and y intercepts. It's going to ask you for the axis of symmetry. I think it asks for domain and range, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, and your max, which we haven't gotten to, but you'll get there. The axis of symmetry is always the h Yep. Yep. And it's x equals that. Yep. So the domain on this function, and hint, domain on all parabolas. Negative infinity, that's the answer to one of the questions on your quiz. One person screws it up every year. Don't be that person. I'm going to write, you're that person next to it on your quiz. Domain on a parabola, it is always negative infinity to positive infinity. The range goes bottom to top. So negative infinity to the maximum point there, which is the y coordinate of your vertex, or four, and that gets a bracket. There's no such thing as an open dot on our quadratic functions. Questions so far? Okay, I'm gonna stop there because there's no way they're gonna.